Or sort of. Thanks, Honza, for the introduction. So, hi, everyone. I'm Jirka, and actually, it's Moravčík, not Moravec or Moravec, so Moravčík. Um, and today, I'll be talking about automating work workflows with LLMs. Now, I'll try to make the talk as short as possible so we can get to the beers and networking part of the event everyone's looking forward to. So, let's get to it. Okay. So, um, first, I'll tell you something about Epify. So, Epify is a web scraping and automation platform. So we find ourselves in our beautiful office, but we also have a beautiful cloud platform. We have more than 1500 ready-made tools, ready-made. He just died. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it, it happens. Okay, so we have SDKs for JavaScript and Python, and we have several open source libraries. Um, so since 2016, we've been getting data for AI, but now with the rise of LLMs in 2022, a new use case appear because LLMs have a training time cutoff, so they don't have the up-to-date data. So you need to provide the up-to-date data so you could work on news articles, etc. So the retrieval augmented generation came around and so nowadays, everyone's doing this, you know, trying to answer questions over their documents or maybe answering questions over their website, etc. So we're very much interested in that and Epify. And one interesting use case is Intercom Spin, which is an AI chatbot. It actually uses Epify to get data from knowledge bases, documentation, or blogs, or whatever. And yeah, in this screenshot, you can see that if we ask the fin how does intercom actually use Epify, it will nicely explain to you that it uses it for data and it will cite the source. So this is really an amazing example of retrieval augmented generation. But in today's talk, we're asking something else. Can we do something more than just getting data? Can we use LLMs to actually perform some actions and automate web workflows? So our customers are very much interested in that. And one of Epify's customers is Rocket Money, and they use Epify to automate unsubscription workflows. So one great example is Netflix. I mean, they don't want you to unsubscribe. They want you to keep paying it. So the unsubscription process can be quite complicated, and they use Epify to automate this. But currently, the workflows have to be written manually. So a programmer has to go there and just program the workflow. And this is not scalable. And this brings us to the motivation of, of the web automation agent. And it's not scalable. And another point is, if you're not a programmer, you don't have a chance of automating anything. Because if you can't write code, then what will you do? And we're asking ourselves, can LLMs help us do this? And this has been already explored, so I'll mention one paper from DeepMind, which is their web agent. It's quite a recent paper, and they've actually explored how to how to navigate a browser with LLMs. They use two, two, two custom models, and the approach is very complicated, and we ask ourselves, can we do it in, in a simpler way? And we actually explored two approaches. Um, the first one was that we let the agent operate autonomously, generate code, execute it, search the web, etc. So you can imagine auto GPT or agent GPT. Now the second approach was much more restricted that we would give the, the agent just a set of specific actions it can execute. And then, you know, it's much more constrained. So you can think about it as, for example, open AI function calling or puppeteer GPT. Now, as for the first approach, this didn't really work well for us. And the reason here is that it actually generated some code and you look at it, well, that looks great. But then you run the code, it either doesn't work or the other option is that it will make up some class selectors in the HTML that don't exist and the code is still useless. So we scratched this idea and went with the second approach. 
So we give the LLM a limited set of actions that it can execute. Now in the screenshot, there are two example actions. One is the go to URL, and you can see that you only need to provide the parameters for the for the LLM and it will go to a specific web page. Now the other action is click element, which will click, for example, an anchor tag on a web page. So this is the interface the LLM will use and trigger the actions. So while developing this, we encountered several challenges. So now I'm going to talk about them. Um, the first challenge that everyone who's worked with large language models has encountered is the context window. You know, the LLMs have a limited number of tokens they can process. And in our case, we're we're feeding it with the HTML. And HTML can be very long. So you have like CSS in there, JavaScript, et cetera. And there are two approaches how we can solve the issue with the context length. One is, for example, using a reading mode and just extracting the data without the HTML. And for example, another option is conversion to markdown. But in our case, we cannot use this because we would lose the HTML text. For example, we wouldn't know what is a link. We wouldn't know, you know, we couldn't do the automation of just extracting text. So we will keep the HTML structure and actually just extract some of the most relevant parts of HTML. So as you can see, you don't need to read the HTML. You should just notice that the one after is much shorter. So we just removed some useless attributes and useless tags. So another challenge is the stochastic nature of LLMs. And we were, we were struggling with testing because, you know, the outputs are quite inconsistent and for the same prompt, something completely different may happen. And you're kind of sitting there and asking yourself, why and the LLM is a black box so you don't know why so you're just sad you know and this just makes testing difficult so is the new prompt better or not yeah now another point is web automation this is difficult on its own the first main point is most of today's websites are written in react or meteor and they're just javascript based so there's some code executing it would be nice if you only just get the raw HTML, but this doesn't happen, you know. So this is tough already. And then let me add some stuff like cookie models and the captchas. And this is difficult for people as well, you know. If you go to a web page, you get two models, then a captcha pops on you, you're like, I'm giving up closing the web page, you know. So this is another point. And let me show one failure case. Um, LLM is trying to click a link, even though the cookie model is still open. So the LLM doesn't really understand it needs to be closed. So it will try to click on something that just doesn't work and it will fail. Um, the last thing is a bit controversial, but um, I think the tooling for LLMs is not as good as it could be. And, you know, with the rise of ChatGPT, there was a race who was going to make the best tool for LLMs, connecting them, you know, with vector databases, document loading, and getting some history for when you're doing a chat application or so. And Blanchain is the winner. They even raised like $10 million seed round, and they have a cloud platform now, which is called Langsmith. But the code base is kind of patched up and messy. They make breaking changes all the time. Let me tell you one funny story. We actually have an integration in the Lang chain. And at some point, a few months ago, they just deleted it during some refactoring. And I had to work my way through to get it back there because they just randomly removed it. And we're still talking about the Python version. They also have a JavaScript version. And the code is a bit worse. And the documentation is much worse. It's just a tragedy to work with. Um, so yeah, let me stop complaining. I'll, I'll have a drink of water because staying hydrated is important. Okay, let's get to the fun part, the demo. 
So I prepared two examples for you. Now the first one is we're going to go to Appify, obviously, then we're going to go to the store page and we're going to search for the AI web agent. Um, then we're going to click the first result and take a screenshot. Now, I want you to notice one thing. We're not telling the agent to fill in the form and then submit the form. We just say search. And this is quite important because if my mother had to write this, she wouldn't write fill in the form and submit the form. She would write search or not even search because she doesn't speak English. Um, okay, so this is the demo video. It's quite short, so we find ourselves on the Appify's homepage. And now we will not, yeah, first we skip the cookie model, that's important. Okay, so we skipped it, now we will go to the store page. Now the agent is typing something, now it searches, and now it clicks the link, you know. And this is actually the web page visited is the web agent executing it. So it actually, the AI web agent was able to go to its own page and click there. And now what's the agent log? This is what was happening behind the scenes. You know, those are the actions that were called. So it just goes to the page, then it clicks on the link, fills in the form, submits the form, clicks on another link, and then takes the screenshot. Okay, so this was successful. And now the second example will be about data extraction. And we'll be trying to extract some data from Appify's pricing page. Now, we want to learn about all pricing plans on Appify and we want to extract the plan name, the monthly price and the actor end. So we are specifying some properties we want. And first let's look at Appify's pricing page. So we see we have five pricing plans. The free one has Eight gigabytes of RAM. It's not actually visible. Let me hide this. How do I hide this one? Okay. Thanks. So you can see for the pre plan, it's eight gigabytes of RAM. For the enterprise, it's unlimited. And now let's see how did the LLM perform actually. Um, you can see that it successfully extracted five pricing plans. We have the correct names, prices, and RAM. So this is also really nice. Um, one last thing. You can try the AI web agent yourself. So if you scan the QR code, you can just go to the AI web, web page. And I'm also going to show this to you in the, in the browser. How do I get out of this? Doesn't do anything. Yeah, nice. Okay, so let's just go to Appify in the store. So if you want to search for it here, you just go to the AI and type, type AI with agent. One cool thing is that we've released it today. So if you want to try it, you'll be one of the early adopters. It's solid. Yeah, so. Now let's get to the Q&A part. So does anyone have any questions? It's the first talk. Uh, so I imagine for a practical use case, you mentioned yeah, you want to make it practical. So I guess a uh, conversational mode would come in useful uh, in a sense that you just don't get like to spite the task in advance, but you are able uh, then to you know, give additional commands to the, to the language model uh, in the first screen. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. We haven't explored that. What we've been exploring is kind of like give a guide to the LLM and then just execute it autonomously. So as, as a form of automation. Now what you're talking about is kind of the idea that you would have a browser with like a chat window and it would do something. I guess like your mother would be doing the browser like that. Is that right? So... Yeah, that's true. I mean, the, the use case here is much more for like automating workflows that cannot be like done manually. You know, imagine you want to scrape 10,000 websites for something and you don't want to implement it for each site separately, or you don't even have the resources for that. Thank you. But did you test uh, uh, this extension and what kind of evaluation metrics did you use? Uh, how do you know that it actually works and uh, that you can release it? Yeah, this is 
difficult and it's still an MVP. So we expect people will break it because let me tell you, we are working with, you know, human input. So someone can type anything they want into the prompt. So that's one black box, humans. And the second black box is the LLMs. So you're kind of like, you're kind of like just watching and, you know, oh, we broke down here. So it's still an MVP and like, we don't have like for testing, we have like a set of inputs that we test and we monitor how well they perform, but not some complex procedure. Yeah, thanks for the question. On top of this, how do you monitor the back and how it works? How, how do we monitor yeah, the yeah. platform? Well, generally, like we've released it today, but what we do for our for our actors is like we have some sort of quality assurance test and we kind of just monitor how it performs. Yeah. But like we released it today and many, not many people have tested it. So, uh, so it's not like something system like this that you No, currently not. Okay. okay last question. Uh, thanks for the talk, super interesting. Uh, I was wondering, did you ever run into any problems where the LLM would basically make up stuff if it's not there and how you would tackle that sort of stuff? Yeah, this happens all the time. Like one tip is obviously that's usually done nowadays, set the temperature of the model to zero because it's the most deterministic. But another point, as I've been talking before, like we tried to approach this. One of the approaches was like let it generate code and search the internet and it wasn't constrained enough so sometimes it just did random things but when we just gave it a handful set of actions it cannot really go out of out of the bounds you know if you have 10 actions it's going to execute one of the 10 actions and it's not going to generate some nonsense and then run it you know so just constraining the model as much as you can while still being being valuable to you thanks for the question so what, one last thing, if you found any of this interesting, we're actually hiring and not only for air engineers, but for other roles as well. So thank you. <laughs>